Welcome to another episode of the Esoteric Lounge Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Crisofoli. I'm excited to share that I've started a Patreon, allowing you, the listener, to get access to more content about the esoteric and occult. With your pledge of the equivalent of just one cup of coffee per month, you will support this show and allow me to continue to grow. I plan to add video as well as interviews with many interesting people I've met along the way who also have experience with esoteric studies. In exchange for your pledge, I will create bonus content exclusive to patrons of this podcast. I will have one to two books of the month, a glimpse into my personal library, and highlight some of the most impactful books that I've come across over the years. I will also have bonus interview questions with guests, where you can get a little bit more information than what's widely available on Spotify, YouTube, or any other listening platform. I'm very excited to elevate this show to the next level, and this can only be done with your support. The link to support the show can be found in the details section of the show if you're listening on Spotify, or below in the video description if you're on YouTube. The seven deadly sins of the Christian church are greed, pride, envy, anger, gluttony, lust, and sloth. Satanism advocates indulging in these as they lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. Anyone who considers Satan as evil should consider all men, women, and children, and animals who have died because it is God's will. These are a couple passages from Anton Xander LaVey's Satanic Bible, a guidebook for the aspiring Satanist. The Satanic Bible offers information on a Satanist's view of God. More specifically, that it is a misconception that Satanists do not believe in God. They see God as the driving, balancing force of nature itself. The book was a satisfying read, and certainly appeals to the side of humans that wishes to gain, to feel, and to experience. While experience caters to the religious man or the non-religious man, it seems to be all about how you interpret the experience and move forward with it being a part of you. Satanism takes the seven deadly sins and asks, why have these seven things, that of which we do the most of each and every day, been turned into some form of wrongdoing by the church? The question is a good one, yet the advocates of living a right life would say that life on earth is but a preparation for existence after death. Forgoing the joys and sensual pleasures while here on earth seals the fate for a person, promising them a divine afterlife filled with inconceivable elation. Otherworldly bliss awaits when you get a firm grasp on your temptations here on earth. What happens after death is unknown, that much is certain. A Satanist argues that we need to do as much as possible while here because of that very reason. Words like hope or faith have no weight to a Satanist because they're a coping mechanism for the finality of existence at best. Humans create God, not the other way around. The widespread low quality of life that exists on earth creates the perfect customers for the church. With life seeming so brutish, short, and uninspired for so many millions of people, it only makes sense that they put their mind and body up for service to a church that promises them an exquisite afterlife, not lacking anything and quite the opposite of their current wretched conditions. To Satanists, man has become lazy in his pursuit of an enriching, fulfilling life on earth. Suicide has become less repugnant, offering the easy way out to a promised heaven. It is known widely that most spiritually advanced and developed doctrines, ironically, come from the poorer parts of the world. For example, Hinduism springs from India primarily, one of the most overcrowded, poor regions known to our world. The question is, do people feel fulfilled enough that they recognize the folly of money and things, so because of that, the nation seems money and things poor, but is actually rich due to the peace and spiritual knowingness that they possess? This is all subjective and cannot be quantified, and makes for an interesting debate. Absence of things, namely money and materials, does not necessarily gauge a people's happiness or quality of inner life. It is an irrefutable thing, and part of what makes the world go round. Materialism could go hand in hand with Satanism. Where materialism thrives, generally there will be a lack of spirituality, as the two cannot coincide completely in the mind or aspirations of a single human being. 
The more materialistically inclined a nation, the less influence the church, synagogue, or place of worship. We have seen this in the West, where competition drives the spirit of man, not God. The basic instincts of self-preservation and achievement push a man to go all the way to the top. Anton Xander LaVey, the founder of modern-day or LaVeyan Satanism, created this doctrine after years as a young man spent playing music out at clubs on Saturday nights seeing the utter debauchery that existed within the walls of the clubs that spilled back out into communities. Raunchy, drunken men and women, uninhibited, doing what they will, out and about, seizing the moment. For the next morning, church came quickly. That was the thing that stupefied LeVay. He noticed the same people he saw on a Saturday night partaking in sex, drugs, copious amounts of alcohol, and many other things, were the same people who would show up dressed to the nines on Sunday morning with the family. They would silently pray, kneel, sing, praise God, and claim to be the good Christian churchgoers who were righteous in every way, pure, God's people. The juxtaposition between a person on a Saturday night and a Sunday morning concerned LeVay, but also inspired him. Why not take that very notion, that very truth that lied right in front of him, and exploit its obvious tenets? Based on these observations, LeVay gained traction and support, eventually starting the Church of Satan in April 1966. Belief in reincarnation provides a beautiful fantasy world in which a person can find the perfect avenue of ego expression, but at the same time claims to have dissolved his ego. This is emphasized by the roles people choose for themselves in past or future lives, says LeVay. It allows alter egos to flourish. If a conservative, mild-mannered person offers you a story about a past life where they were a robber baron who killed, swindled, and lived on the edge, is nothing more than a fantasy appealing to an alter ego. There is infinite opportunity to make believe, just as children do. A prominent point throughout the Satanic Bible, LeVay states that those religions which weigh heavily on the concept of ego death, or dissolution, of the self in order to become one with a higher self breeds conversation, lecture, and general chit-chat, which is actually just another avenue for one's ego to flourish. The ultimate hypocrisy. The ego denial delusion becomes so strong in someone that they maintain an even more grandiose ego than before they started their journey into the death of that very same thing. I must admit there are hot spots throughout the world, and more especially in many towns I've personally lived, where this is quite apparent and equally as nauseating to witness. Delusion is a powerful thing, oftentimes the primary source of fuel to drive us through this journey called life. But nonetheless, the hypocrisy stands, and that is one of LeVay's better points. LeVay has stated that the main reason for creating Satanism is to be in direct opposition to the Christian church. Any dogmatic orthodox religion would most likely fall under those he opposed but Christianity and its pious followers and leaders are the focus of LeVay's movement. When looking at the symbolism of Satanism, we find a pentagram, but there is always a prevailing detail about the pentagram that must be noted. It's easy for the lay person to see a pentagram and immediately think of evil, more specifically, satanic forces. But the inverted position of the pentagram is what's necessary. Three points need to be pointing downward or on the bottom of the pentagram. This is a mockery of the Holy Trinity that exists in Christianity. LeVay says, Religionists have kept their followers in line by suppressing their egos. By making their followers feel inferior, the awesomeness of their God is ensured. Satanism encourages its members to develop a good, strong ego because it gives them the self-respect necessary for a vital existence in this life. The ego is part of every human, a necessary mechanic of our body to give us a sense of self. Often shunned by Eastern religions, it has been fully realized as an essential and often benevolent part of our being by many philosophers. Egoism stems from the Latin ego, meaning I, and should not be confused with egotism, which is the psychological overvaluation of one's own importance or activities. The ego is a healthy part of our psyche. When it becomes inflated, it's harmful. But as it is through regular and habitual experience and living, kept well in check and understood, it makes each of us who we are. Satanists are no strangers to this notion. Ego development means personal development. 
Indulging in all that life and the five senses have to offer reinforces the ego, enriching your earthly existence and your sense of self. Satanism could be viewed as the practical down-to-earth religion. The Teutonic goddess of the dead and the daughter of Loki was Hel, spelled H-E-L, a pagan god of torture and punishment. Another L was added when the books of the Old Testament were formulated. The prophets who wrote the Bible did not know the word Hel as it is today. They used the Hebrew Sheol and the Greek Hades, which meant graves. Also the Greek Tartaros, which was the abode of fallen angels. The underworld, inside the earth, and Gehenna, which was a valley near Jerusalem where Moloch reigned and garbage was dumped and burned. It is from this that the Christian church has evolved the idea of fire and brimstone in hell. Most Satanists do not believe that Satan is an anthropomorphic being with cloven hooves, a barbed tail, and horns, as I had said earlier. He merely represents a force in nature, a force that cannot be pinpointed by scientific measures and that, in its ubiquity, is seen as some force of darkness, mainly because it's misunderstood and powerful. It is an untapped reservoir that few can make use of because they lack the ability to use a tool without first having to break it down and label all of its parts that make it run. It is this incessant need to analyze which prohibits most people from taking advantage of this many-faceted key to the unknown, which the Satanist chooses to call Satan. That concludes the episode on Satanism. It's a very interesting topic. What are your thoughts on it? Does Anton LaVey make a good argument for his doctrine? I hope this will introduce you to something new. I picked up the Satanic Bible in 2015 when I wanted to learn more about how a good friend of mine operated. He was a self-proclaimed Satanist and also one of the nicest, most caring people I know. I picked up the book for around $10 at a local bookstore. I really enjoyed reading something in direct opposition to most of what I read and study. It's good to know all sides of belief that are available, and rather than being swept away by the tide of reinforced information, Make yourself open and available to all options. This creates a mental environment for inquisitiveness and always enhances life. Don't stay stagnant. And always remember that even if someone believes in something different than you, it doesn't make their belief any less strong. Seek to understand rather than condemn. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one.